I will be reading from my latest collection, Black Dove Paloma Negra. And if you're wondering about the image on the cover, that is my great grandmother, Francesca Pena Contreras. And I'll start by reading a poem about her. She was called Frances. Frances, you were a woman who rarely sat, I imagine. But in this photograph, you sit all four feet, eight inches of you. Erect and powerful as a queen, requiring no one to look to exist in that chair. But you are not of royalty. You were the mother of 10 children. And in your house, in your eyes are a two bedroom house. 600 square feet, an old sixth ward, where you would bear and raise children, live with sisters and brothers and their children, sometimes cousins and distant relatives. You were quiet, gentle, but in the set of your black eyes, which would turn cataract gray, and the, ter and the determined fix of your mouth, you carry the knowledge and strength to survive the loss of your son, Joe, who drowned in Buffalo Bayou at 12 years old. You carry the knowledge and strength of being an indigenous Mexican-American woman with the audacious dream and determination to see her brown boys go to war, come back alive and go to university to see one daughter attend a music conservatory and another daughter to study with the most prominent painter in town. You carry the imagination of turning the means of a blacksmith into generations of scientists, lawyers, bankers, business people, educators, writers, artists, and thinkers. Look at you holding watercolored red flowers in your right hand, letting it hang a sprig of purpled wildflowers decorating your breast. Your black hair let down to hang along the back of your white dress to the legs of the chair. Your feet dressed in hardy point pointed boots staggered with your legs crossed. You own the chair that you sit on and are the owner of all that will come to pass for our family. Long after the time of this photo, circa 1910, a young bride at the brink of creating a history with her own hands and body, looking right at us in the eye. Don't come here with this foolishness. Bring what I made of you. My grandfather thinks he's in World War II Germany. My grandfather thinks he's in World War II Germany, but he's in Houston, 20, 2001. Don't you know there's a war going on, he says. Over the plate, he lowers his head. There's too much food on this plate. He moves his arms slowly and eats piece by piece the air like water he is waiting. I want to meet him on the other side of the water, waving from that shore and still do. His left leg shakes occasionally a thought that comes out of nowhere and disappears. While he eats, he tells me of, of the glow of the fire, crimson, aching, present, as his father molded the horseshoes in his workshop 70 years ago. That was good, miss, he says, as he takes my arm to leave the kitchen. Against me, his arms are thin and hard like branches, a bare tree against the wind. His frailty stings me. Yet outside, there he is. He sits on a sagging lawn chair, his whittled down legs, 
set in a straight military-like style, ready, waiting. I rest my hand on his shoulder. He used to tell me to be careful and talk of the times during war to get through until he good, couldn't and was gone. Did he ever tell me who fell before him, who he shot at Stuttgart, which friends were shot by German insurgents, what kind of boy you were before that, and what kind afterward? It was sacred to walk with him and even to think of it now, almost 20 years later, it was a gift to be in his silence, the words he lost or could not say. At Christmas time, he used to swing me in the air in his thick brown hands, tossing me again and again until my screams of delight turned to cries. Then he'd bear hug me into his chest and the smell of beer fried chicken and the scent of his clothes that made me think of a carpet of grass and sweat and driving really slow up the street in his avocado green station wagon. His chuckle of an origin deep inside. Oh, my baby girl, and how that voice thundered through my small body and how I'd struggle to breathe under his muscled arms the white t-shirt and his button up, the felt I warmed against and those noises rolling from the cave of his giant drumming chest. And this is a longer poem, so I'll close with this poem. Who speaks for us here? Who speaks for us here too? Hear that noise? I'm getting stirred. The bright bruise and its busted up stars, a sickness lining my lungs, not scarred, but iridescent with darkness, flare. I sing, why am I here like this? Peel me back, see the cut veined indigo, rivers even here, the recreation room at Live Oaks Hospital, its hellscape of linoleum and horse pill numb. Despite this, I find a sharpened landscape, history pushed and shaped from inside with nothing but hands, but organs too, the loyal pup of a spleen, purple valves wagging, the heart's tail saying, look what I can do, Look what I'm still doing. I'm not done at all. Watch me flicker under a thumb. Watch me teach others what to do under a knuckle, a hand. Hear that noise. That wild self choired, corralled in a thought box. All of us together can make a great sound. Didn't your father sing that? It's not all just noise. Hear the hum. Human here, the music of hum, that deep sound, Sister Eve growl, sacred self, fractured self, part times part, choir self, whole cell self within the house, self the noise it makes inside, mansion of sounds. The sound makes a room, beams in the walls, studs, mortar, loud, architecture of selves. Answer the call to this grand estate, splendid hum of house, landscape both burnt and flare. Answer the call to enter, choir from inside, ruffle, ruffle, cur curtained, off-lit place, bedroom dilapidated and full to the brim. Uproar, racket, orchestra harmonic, the body wants and takes at last of children's songs, sharpened beautiful into breastbone, a bended neck of whip to dance, not with the red smeared grin, lowered eyes, controlled hip hop as if by puppet string, but dance and swing and scrape, dance into pull to carry to toe feet, then legs, full thighs, letting the horizon slip through twerk, 
golden trap space of your own body, opened by two arms, one mouth, whole self, body this brick box house of red caravan. I've pulled the shape of a mouth, open with teeth, white hot swing, heel cut loose. How to live in this slipping place. How our ancestors learned to live with this slipping place. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the Houston Public Library and the Poet Laureate Program, I am very grateful for the people listening today. And I hope you enjoyed hearing the words of Jim Leach and Aaliyah Levante. Thank you again. And I hope you um, go into the rest of your day nourished by these words. Thank <laughs> you.